Summer is about family and fun, and when it's centered on a great meal, it's just better. Good thing your neighborhood Safeway has great deals on all the favorites that make summer full of fun. Get outdoors and get grilling with USDA Choice Beef Ribeye Steak, only $6.99 a pound with your club card. Stop by the dairy department for 12-count lucerne eggs, just 77 cents each with a coupon limit, too. Plus, get over $80 in coupon savings from this week's ad. Tastier meats, better summers, Safeway. It's just better. Hi, I'm Stunning Stella Cheeks. And I'm the Enigma Erin Klein. And this is Not, Not Your, Your Demographic. Demographic, a feminist wrestling podcast. Shockingly, those exist. <laughs> <laughs> Start the podcast going, hello babies. Oh Jesus. And now all I want to do is say that. Hello babies. No. <laughs> it sounds absolutely dreadful, actually. It's a really funny podcast. How are you? Uh f- not good. I don't know. Fine. I don't know. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh so first I'm just gonna say this is gonna be one of those ones where we just kinda run through everything because we're both kind of uh in shitty moods. Yeah, not <laughs> so, feeling great, but we have a duty to you guys. Yes. So we're here even though we both just wanna be in the covers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um so First, I'm just going to do this at the top of the show because I think that it is important that we address this, but there's a lot of fucked up stuff going on right now in America, and there is a real problem with police brutality, especially against black men and black people, and it it's a problem, and it is hard and sad to see so many people just be blind and ignorant and really shitty about it, and like... I'm sad in my soul about this and it makes me sad and it's hard to enjoy things and to be a person in some ways because there's so much fucked up shit going on. But I think that it's really important that we all understand that it's going to take everyone to change this and that it's only through action and through coming together and through reaching out and understanding people who are not like yourself and who are treated much worse than you are treated that we that we can maybe solve this i don't know if we can solve this i hope that we can i really hope we can because police brutality affects a lot of people including a lot of white people including a lot of police too yeah exactly like not every not that i'm defending anybody's actions whatsoever because like the things that went on are absolutely horrible but there were a lot of police officers that died this past week too exactly and it's not not every not every black person is a gangster not every police officer is gonna shoot somebody but there is this weird disconnect and divide between many communities and it's just hard to think about uh and hard to see like the light at the end of the tunnel but like Aaron said I think as as long as everybody you know stays like I mean this is a catchphrase but like stays woke and like tries Mm -hmm. to you know implement some action whether it's voting for somebody or calling your congressman or protesting or donating or, money if you or can donating money or reaching out to the people in your life who may or may not be affected by these types of things checking in with their mental states and being there being an ally or if it's you know i don't know it's just it's hard to like articulate yeah because it's so overwhelming and also like i think that it's really important to call people on their bullshit Like, if you see people being shitty, like, you are complicit if you do not say something. And that, I think, is especially important right now. Like, it's important to all oppressed people and to all groups who are treated as though they are less than, less than. And if you see something happening and you see people saying things that you care about, they assume that you are a bigot, too, if you don't say something. And, like, people only say that. kind of right if you don't say something. Yeah, and, like, if... The only reason people say those things around you or in your presence or on your timeline, knowing that you follow them, is because they believe that you agree with them. And if you don't say you are wrong and what you think is shitty and bad, 
they assume that you're like that and right. you are like that sort of if you don't say something so that is also very important right now and also if you're on twitter reach out and follow activists who are working to stop this because they have better answers than we do on how to fix it also they have there are a couple organizations and websites where you can donate money or they'll tell you which congressman to call right yeah um so yeah definitely follow activists if you're wondering like well i'm just a dumb white girl how do i help like there step one follow activists don't be an idiot if you're on twitter you should be following these people step two call your congressman step three you know vote vote step one vote <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep also if you have extra money give money Mm -hmm. Also, if you have time, go to help people. You know, I went to a concert with a friend last night, and I put my bag in her trunk because we were going to the venue because, you know, I had my computer or whatever. And I saw all this, like, water and this big box of um, goldfish, and I was like, why do you have so much, like, food in your trunk? She was like, oh, that's those are, like, for homeless people. So whenever I see homeless people, I always have water and I always have food to give them. And I was, like, kind of shocked. I was like, I would never have, you know, shame on me for, like, judging mm -hmm. you by never ever would have like thought that you were the type of person to do this and also like that's amazing yeah mm -hmm. that's brilliant why do we all not just have a bunch of water in our cards just in the case we see somebody who needs water right exactly like it can be something simple like that you just have to implement change in your life right exactly <sighs> and if you are a white person who you know says something and then somebody calls you on your bullshit and you Instead of being like offended, like, oh, well, I'm not a racist, maybe just listen. Maybe be like, you know what? Maybe what I said was, you know, it, my intent may have not been mm -hmm. bad behind it, but like the fact that it affected somebody in a negative way, maybe I should think about it instead of just immediately getting fucking defensive. Right, exactly. It, and it's like, of course, there are people who don't understand that what they're saying is offensive and how will you ever know unless you listen when someone tells you that it's offensive like we all say dumb stuff i have said dumb fucking stuff that i regret in the past because i did i literally didn't understand that it was dumb and racist until someone said yo bitch that's dumb and racist don't say that like yeah. and i listened and i and became then, a stronger person because of that also like you can acknowledge that you said something bad but also go a step further and like maybe analyze why it was bad and yeah. also like what in me made me say that and how can I you know change starts with from within mm -hmm. so why do I assume these things about these people or these actions who taught me this and why did they teach me this if you just learned it from your parents and your parents are kind of racist like that that happens it like I my family is like that. They're a conservative, religious family who say and do dumb stuff. But, you know, honestly, like, even engaging people in conversation... Okay, here's a great example of this. My stepdad is a very conservative lawyer in Michigan, and I was, like, dreading having to talk to him about <laughs> Black Lives Matter. Like, oh, my God, this is going to be just the worst thing ever. And he, they were in town for my sister's... Uh, 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 her... I was going to say induction. That's not right. Uh, the... The thing that you do before you go to college. Orientation. Orientation. I was <laughs> were, like, I have no idea. <laughs> they were in town for her orientation. We were out to dinner. And I had a conversation with one of my cousins and a couple of friends of mine about the difference between black people being shot by police and white people being shot by police and how it's different. Other than just the numbers. Right. Well, it, there are a lot of white people that are shot by police. But when you look at it proportional to the population, it's really obvious how it so much more affects black men and black people. And... So I had this conversation with my cousin and my stepdad brought it up at dinner and I was like, oh fucking God, here we go. We're in public right now. Like this is the worst place that this could happen. And he was really open-minded about it. And he was like, I was really happy to see that. And I was really surprised to see that from both of you and that you guys had this conversation and it didn't resort to yelling and everyone was very calm. He was like, and it made me really think about a lot of stuff. I was like, holy fuck <laughs> like you're an old white dude and like you're actually thinking critically you're about black life. yeah exactly and like that it being calm and having reasoned conversation with people does change some people's opinions not everyone should be expected to have to be calm and reasonable though and like people who are more directly affected by this are gonna be more angry and they should be more angry and like don't shut them down just because they're more pissed because their lives are more in danger than yours too also very important to keep in mind absolutely Okay, all right, we're gonna shake it off. We're gonna shake it off. Yeah. I'm gonna talk about some wrestling now. Yeah. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> all right. Bringing it down up top. 
Um, yep. But it's important to talk about. Yes. Also, if there is a bunch of ambient noise, the people above me have a fucking kid over and... <laughs> It's just running back and forth. There are friends. I feel comfortable saying this because nobody, I don't think any of in that circle listen to this podcast, but there are friends, but they have no idea how loud they are. <laughs> like it's, I think it's a combination of them and also just the way the apartment is built. Mm-hmm. And you, parts of your apartment are still empty and not decorated right. and like it's, so it's more echoey than it will be later. Yeah, but a kid running back and forth and just banging. So they're loud. <laughs> so they're very loud. loud. <laughs> and it's also raining and kind of near a window so and also whatever ambient noise happens true (sighs) are you wearing a wrestling shirt i am i'm wearing uh an nxt page shirt oh or like her old page think again i don't know why i wore a page shirt two weeks in a row it's just (laughs) i have a lot of page shirts yeah (laughs) that's fair have you been reading any of her like instagram i think Paige is losing it a little bit really no i have not been She, she has posted a couple like things with pictures that kind of don't correlate, but basically, like, obsessive, like, uh, obsessive things about, like, El Rico del Rio. Oh, I saw the one about her ovaries exploding. I saw someone respond to it who said something about ADR posting about his balls exploding, and I was like, I'm ready to beat down on whoever this asshole is. And then I read hers, and I was like, oh. Yeah, there was another <laughs> that one. That was, like, an appropriate response to what she said. It's weird. I guess if, like, he was also doing stuff, I would feel less weird about it, but because it's so one-sided, it seems like you know it's very weird it seems like a young girl falling in love with like an older man and like different a lot of differences and it's just weird it's like really weird to consume Ugh, weird. I'm just like mm, okay I just have all these shirts <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right it's a comfortable shirt yeah I mean it is a nice shirt <laughs> what shirt are you wearing I'm wearing my new Colt Cabana Sunspot shirt. It's his new yellow one with the black grid of dots with the one red on it it's fucking comfortable as hell I don't get it you know, I don't totally get it either. I just she really just l- like I'm different. Yeah, I'm the I, red dot. I really like the design of it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. I don't really either. <laughs> right. But I really like it. And it looks really nice on me, so yeah. it's like cut really well. It fi- is actually it fits. Piece? Yes it is. Yeah. Yep. I don't feel bad ordering from them. I know people are gonna be like shitty about it. But like whatever, I do. I think that some of their designs are shit. Yeah. Do I think that whoever runs their social media is a dick? Yeah. But do I think the thing about you have to have a certain amount of followers or else we don't sell your shit is really shitty? Yeah, yeah. it is super shitty. Do I still want to buy a Heidi Lovely shirt? Yeah. Is yeah. that the place where I can buy it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the hard thing. It's, it's like, no God, it's no worse than buying from WWE. Yeah. And the, the wrestlers get more money. Yeah, yeah, it's shitty, but like there are limited options, so I'm... Yeah. And we also benefit too. Battles. Like we benefit from for being me. in the city where you right. can I just pick all my that stuff up from true. them. Like I the thing with them is I know that they have forgotten to make my orders and so I call at the very end of my window every single time and ask them if it's been made and they always say, "Oh, I'm sorry, there was a small delay. It'll be ready tomorrow because I know that they print it immediately as soon as I call." <laughs> Here's the thing, don't ever email them. They never answer their emails. That's not call. True. They, not on my end. I've had two misprints on my shirts and they have been like send me a picture and I've sent them pictures and then hmm. they ship me out a new one. Interesting, because I know a bunch of people who like they cannot get through to their email. How long ago was that last time that that happened? Like a month ago. Oh man, weird. Because my Joey Ryan shirt had a hole in it. Oh, that's right. And then like I don't know, like a year ago, my EC3 shirt only the front was printed, the back wasn't printed. That's right. And they were really chill about it. They were like, okay, the new ones in the mail. Hmm. Interesting. I've had like really pleasant experiences. With I've them, had so. mostly okay experiences. With- experiences with them only because I know how to deal with a business that doesn't do what I want yeah. and isn't I mean, doing I their job great and I think there are are definitely more ethical sites mm-hmm. that you can go through I think what a maneuver is like a great the best. a great site to go through mm-hmm. I really like them um, a lot so I don't know it's just like choose what you want to get angry about yeah the people who are angry about it I get it yeah I totally I do just, too the other thing about pro wrestling tees is they're like the only people who print consistent women's sizes. That's like, true. And I want some of my and shirts. And their women's sizes fit really well. Yeah, and like I want some of my shirts in women's cuts. Like I don't mind buying from, uh, I like What a Maneuver and I like a lot of their designs, but their women's cut isn't really a women's cut. It's is like, a, not really, no. Not like this is, like you know how pro wrestling tees, it's like slimmer and the shoulders they're are like a little more fitted. Fits. Yeah, the, the, uh, what a maneuver one seems like they're just resized a little bit. Yeah. Like it's not actually like a straight up women's cut. And I like a, a normal, a normal, a straight up women's cut. Me too. So pros and cons. Whatever. Yep. Like you said, pick your battles. <laughs> yep. Did you have any news? I don't have any news. Um, 
John Cena's hosting the ESPYs right now. That's true. That is happening. Oh, yeah. We're recording on a Wednesday. Yeah, that's true. We are recording um, on a Wednesday. Impact is moving to Thursdays next week, which is smart. Very smart. Uh, SmackDown Live starts next week. The Cruiserweight Classic starts right now. Mm-hmm. That's happening right now. Ben Baylor and Nakamura are beating each other up right now. Yeah, they are. I'm fairly excited about watching that later. Uh, it's going to be great. That's it. I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of anything either. All right, let's move on. Yeah, I haven't really been paying attention much. I've been, I've been sad all week. Very stressed at work. And yeah. Then, like, there's awful stuff going on in the news and in the world. And yep. I'm having personal life stuff, so I'm just not. Yeah. Paying attention that much to wrestling. I'm still watching it. That's true. Just not really paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> so watching it, I'm watching it more to escape than anything else right now. Like it's one of the things I, I like don't feel bad about enjoying. Oh. I've been reading a lot more. I've, uh, I've am rereading Sandman right now, I'm which jealous. is giving me fucked up nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading, I forgot Sandman. The second Sandman is all about serial killers. Oh great. <laughs> well, it's not all about serial killers, but a big storyline is all about serial killers. And I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> I've been here's a thing that I did this week too have you listened to Hamilton yet no I don't like musicals I I like musicals I don't usually like popular musicals you should really listen to I Hamilton I know and there are some music for me to say I don't like musicals is dumb because there are some musicals I like I just like you also like history and politics and that's why I think you would like this but oh, so I have good. been listening to a lot of baby geniuses. I mean, that's fine. Here's the thing. I'm going to pimp that podcast a little bit more because it's so funny. So okay, half of it is just two funny women, which I already like Emily Heller a lot. And then there's Lisa Hannawalt, who is a, um, a cartoonist who is really good. And they're very funny. And they, they, they talk and whatever. And then they always have like a Wikipedia page of the week that they talk about. And mm-hmm. then they have a comedian on and they just kind of all shoot the shit. And it's funny. But at the end... They have this thing called the expert hour, and they bring in a, an expert. I'm using air quotes, <laughs> but it's just another comedian who makes up a fake name, and they just like make up a topic, and they're just like improving. <laughs> it's not always a, a hit, but when it is good, it is like I almost fell off a ladder because I was listening to it at work. <laughs> I was like hanging stuff for a wedding and listening to it, and I almost fell off a ladder. I was laughing so hard because they had this <laughs> expert on Cool Whip, <laughs> but it was just like this really crazy divorced mom. <laughs> It's so funny. And then there was one guy who was um, trying to sell some, like, caffeinated gum, but he kept, like, casually mentioning that people in his family, like, got into really fatal accidents, but he kept calling them whoopser dudes. <laughs> He's like, oh, my daughter, she just uh, she just had a bit of a whoopser do. <laughs> and then em- Emily was like, so whoopser do is just code for, like, a fatal accident. <laughs> um, but just the way... <laughs> it's so fucking funny there was like um one where it was like a doctor named Cl- dr clint horace who was the <laughs> expert in feminism but like didn't know anything about like, female <laughs> anatomy with, but it was so stupid and funny um anyways it is a very funny podcast all right that's legit it's funny because it's just comedians doing this shit but it's also funny because like man those experts fucking kill me <laughs> <laughs> they're funny like they're they're like 90% of the time funny. Like, sometimes improv is like, yeah, oh, it yeah, doesn't go happens. anywhere. Um, but, and some of the Wikipedia pages that they talk about are really interesting. Like, there are things that That's I, cool. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, Baby Geniuses. Listen to it, I guess. All right. Since we talked about Baby Geniuses, I'm going to play you my favorite line from Hamilton. Are you ready? It's Sure. Okay. I'm, I'm going to have to pause this in this. All right, here we go. Do, 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 do you know do. where it is? Yeah, I do. Of course I know where it is. Oh, my God. I've been listening to this nonstop. Okay. You need that as a tattoo. It is amazing. It is so good. Right, exactly. I listened to it all the way through. It was just like, I am born again. This is amazing. (laughs) It blew my mind. I would come out of musical theater retirement to play King George the Third straight up. He has this great line. That's it's uh 
oceans rise, empires fall. And he does this like sweet crescendo over it. It is just so good. No wonder Lin-Manuel Miranda won a fucking Pulitzer. It is, I just can't pimp it enough. It's so fucking good. It's like one of the only things I didn't feel guilty about enjoying like this whole week is one of the, like I was running around my house just screaming motherfucking Southern Democratic Republicans at the top of my lungs like all day. <laughs> I'm sure my neighbors were just absolutely thrilled about it. <laughs> oh, also uh, Bernie endorsed Hillary. So all you... Bernie bros. Let's not a dick. let's not be divisive about it. No, sorry, but let's kind of be divisive about it. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I got into an argument on the way over here with somebody who I respect and am good friends with, but he is it Dan Kerr? No, it's <laughs> no Shout Dan out to Dan Kerr. No, Dan has actually been. Oh, I just remember. I don't. I like him a lot. Just because yeah. like, I remember, like months ago, you two got into it. Oh on, yeah, <laughs> on Facebook, and I was just sitting there like, ooh. Yep. No, it's uh, it's somebody else. But we were talking about. He, there was a really great article about let's grow up liberals, which is based from a um, conservative concession speech 30 years ago. Um, but when people are divisive about politics, they often say that like Trump or Hillary, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. People Wrong. said the same thing about Gore and George W. Bush. It does matter. There is a difference. And I got into an argument with someone today about how even if you don't want to vote for the lesser of two evils, like, okay, I get that, sort of. <clears throat> I like sort of understand that. But it has always been like that. It's always been like that. Presidential politics have always been the lesser of two evils because you have to live really shitty lives, basically, to be able to be eligible to be president. Like, you have to live a very political life. It's very fucking hard. But if you don't think about the human element of what would happen if Trump was president, like, that is just reckless and irresponsible. Like, yeah, it must be nice to not have to worry about being deported or not having abortion access or, I don't know, if you like legal marijuana or improved infrastructure or... Or you ha ha are of a different uh, sexuality than... Right, exactly. The quote-unquote norm, which is right. the worst word. Yeah, exactly. Or if you are, like, you know, heteronormative, but you are very open sexually. Right, and, like... To just look past that and be like, whatever, they're exactly the same. Like, it must be very nice to be that privileged to not even worry a little bit about what a Trump presidency would be like. Even if we took control of all of Congress, he could veto everything. And, like, that and he's is... he's a megalomaniac, so he would. So he would, absolutely. He would just veto absolutely everything. And, like, to, to look past that is just reckless. And it, like, makes me really sad that people don't think about that. Like, just... Vote for a candidate who represents a party platform. You know, honestly, I will say this about Bernie. I don't like that he hasn't formally suspended his campaign. I do think it was very smart of him not to do that so that he could have impact on the Democratic National Convention's platform. I think that that was actually a very smart political move. I think it's probably the smartest move that he made in his whole campaign, actually. Mm -hmm. And, like, that... Those things matter, and if you really care about Bernie Sanders, listen to what he's saying about Trump not being president. <laughs> like, also, follow really that message. Also, if you care about Bernie Sanders, make sure that you don't forget to vote in the midterm election. I completely agree. Because that's, that's what happened when we were like, yeah, revolution, hope, Obama, he's in, let's all just put our thumbs up our butts and sit around. Yep. Oh, wait, all the Republicans are in Congress? Great. Shit. So, yeah. So that's a thing. Man, we're getting real political yeah, today. <laughs> we're both in that kind of mood. Yep. Uh, I mean, if anybody is a new listener, like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this was not the week to jump in for the sorry first about time. It. Uh, okay. Um, let's talk about something amazing. Let's talk about the final deletion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I like, don't even know how to. Start. My favorite part about the final deletion was Vanguard One. The, my the drone <laughs> that's just like around. Also, Vanguard One in this past week's episode of TNA has like, is like Matt Hardy treats it like it's his, it's his job. Like <laughs> Vanguard One brought him like a piece of Jeff Hardy's clothing because he was like getting rid of all physical evidence, and he was like, "Thank you, Vanguard One. <laughs> you you understand me." And he's just like <laughs> floating around like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it didn't bark, but <laughs> metaphorically. Oh, also, I'm in the squeaky chair tonight. Sorry, <laughs> loud and political. Yeah, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> uh, I can't decide if my favorite part of Final Deletion was Maxwell's streak in his hair, or pink, <laughs> Senior Benjamin's pink taser, or the drones, or the lawnmower, or the dilapidated boat. I think my favorite part is when Matt Hardy goes, "You're not the only landscaper in the family," <laughs> and he ruins his lawn. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think my favorite line was, here is the remainder of the gasoline from our earlier landscaping escapades. <laughs> like, that is a word salad you just threw together, and I need to know more. <laughs> just about, okay, so in this week, uh, Matt Hardy was, like, thanking the boat that protected him. He was like, you protect, you shielded me from Brother Nero's fireworks. <laughs> You deserve a worthy, like, I don't know. He just, like, was talking to the boat and talking to the drone, and it was very... <laughs> oh, my God. Jeff Hardy shooting off that firework gun shirtless was like, what is happening? Jumping out of the tree. Ah! Missing him. He missed him, and he fucked that ladder up, and I was like, all right, this is how this is going to be. I see. <laughs> oh, my God. Michael watched it with me. I, he was leaving, and so I was like, I'm just going to put this on. You don't have to pay attention. And he sat... And in silence, watched the whole thing. And I was like, I know that this is good because normally he would shit all over TNA and he was totally into it. He was talking about it on Twitter and like it's joking around bad, about the Hardys. But it's supposed it's to be bad. It's supposed to be bad. It's a it's comment so on itself. Funny. Yeah, and it, it works. And, and this it's week, so good. This week, um, so in the Hardy Theater, which is in their house, I guess, and it's got little pictures of like, it's got a picture of Maxwell as like Nacho Libre and then like Revy and, and Matt as like some other characters. Um, but in there, like, they invited like a bunch of people over, but also like Maxwell's like friends. And so a bunch of babies just watched the final deletion and they were all just like laughing. And like, ah! And Maxwell had a, like a little shirt on that said iconic on it. Oh my God. It so funny. Also, the guy who was the ref is now like. Matt Hardy's like personal assistant. Perfect. Also, now they have a finger motion that goes with delete. They just like swipe, like swipe, <laughs> like swipe right or whatever, swipe left, and they go delete, delete, yeah, oh delete, God. and like everybody does it. It's so fucking weird. Oh, I love it. That's so good. I loved Willow coming out of the water. That legitimately that scared awesome. and surprised me, and I was really excited about it. That was fucking awesome. But Willow was Senior Benjamin. I know. <laughs> Well, Willow was wi- was Willow, was Hardy, and then got then, yeah, or Jeff Hardy, and then got tased with pink, the pink taser, and then in moments, <laughs> Willow was like, "Here's my costume, bye." <laughs> I will say my one piece of like real criticism about the match was I thought that it ended very abruptly. Yeah. I thought that there was gonna be more to it, or that he was gonna like pin him in the fire. Also, it wasn't that much of a match. Yeah, he just kind of like fell off the yeah. Hardy thing. <laughs> I thought it could have had a better climax. I yeah. agree. So that was like my only real complaint about it. But I enjoyed everything up until then. And then to have such a confusing ending was like, well. <laughs> Whatever. I know. And they keep continuing it. Like, they just had a bunch of weird shit, <laughs> like, in Charleston or wherever they're from. And then Matt Hardy this week was in the ring. Um, and he called Jeff Hardy out. And, oh, God, what did Rebby say? Like, she, like, walked by Jeff Hardy while... It was like a, a Game of Thrones, like shame type of thing. Like, <laughs> shame, I don't know. Uh, she said something akin to like forgotten, forgotten or something like that. Oh. Like, it was super creepy. <laughs> um, but then uh, Matt Hardy was like, "You don't get to quit. You don't get to go over to that other company with Mick McCann or whatever." He like made up a fake Vince McMahon name, which was so funny. Um, he was like, "You don't get to leave." I, you will understand that being deleted is worse than death. Oh. <laughs> So, okay. <laughs> he's he's like, uh, what did Matt Hardy say? He's like, I may be broken, but I will never be broke. He's like, I'm gonna oh. use, I'm gonna use your face and the Hardy brand to make me money. Ooh, it was such a good line. Wow, and good then for him. Jeff Hardy was just in like a pink hoodie, sweaty, and like looked really upset. <laughs> it was kind of weird. Uh, weird, weird. I um, like it. Other things happening in TNA since we're on it. Uh, Drew Galloway and Ethan Carter got into a street fight, um, but they basically just took their shirts off and then wrestled in jeans and then <laughs> took it backstage. <laughs> like that's basically all that happened. Great. <laughs> um, they're really this past week was live and it it no big problems. Good, that's so good. So good for Pop and good for Impact. Um, they hired a new female commentator, a la Renee Young. Like a okay, it actually was pretty. It's pretty effective. I like her. I don't good. know who it is. Um, but uh, I think Michelle something. I don't feel like looking it up. But it's I liked her. She cool. wasn't just like, you know, some dummy. Yeah, mm-hmm. she did a good job. Okay, good. Um, uh, 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 so this past week was um, the X, like the like live show that focused on the X division. Mm-hmm. Um, DJ Z won in the number one contenders match. Um, they're really pushing DJ Z. Yeah, which is great. I like He's him. He's a good wrestler, and they're giving him a little bit more 
talking time so he can like build his character up or whatever. But then Mike Bennett came out and like blindsided him and beat him up because last week Mike Bennett and um, Maria and Dixie and Billy all got into like this weird fight. In yeah, the that's ring. right. I remember that. And Maria was just yelling. She was like, quit, quit, quit. She threw like a crazy temper tantrum, <laughs> which was awesome. Um, so Mike Bennett was like, I'm going to ruin, mm-hmm. I'm going to ruin uh, this, I'm going to ruin this show for everyone. Yeah. Um, so then DJZ and Mike Bennett got into a match and Mike Bennett was kind of getting his ass kicked and then he tried to leave and then the whole X Division came out and was like, no, you get back in that ring. You can't <laughs> disrespect every single one of us and expect to get away with it. So then he got rolled up by DJZ and then Mike Bennett was like, oh, I'm going to destroy this company and I'm not going to do it alone. I'm going to call my friend. All right. Um, I didn't read anything in advance so I didn't know who it was, but at, oh. the, end of the, at the end of the whole show, so it's... It was Eddie Edwards and Bobby Lashley in a title for title match. Because mm-hmm. basically, if you get the X Division title, you can cash it in at Destination X. It's called um, Option C, created by my one true love, Austin Aries. <laughs> um, but you can basically cash in your X Division title as to get a shot at the mm-hmm. TNA Championship. And so Bobby Lashley was like, no, don't even do that. Let's just have a title for title match. You win, you get both. I win, I get both. So they were putting on a really, really good match. Um, but then Mike Bennett came out and, like, fucked a bunch of people over. And then Moose's music came on. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Moose came out. I was, like, because I honestly, like, I haven't been reading a lot of, like, dirt sheets or anything. I was, like, shocked. I think most people were pretty My, like, shocked. I literally, like, job and, like, went, oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Yep. I think most Which people were pretty also, shocked. also, like, I mean, it was two weeks ago that he was going to WWE like yeah but it was also like a great surprise yeah and also what is kind of cool is that if he's with TNA he can also wrestle other places right exactly and because Trevor Lee and Andrew Ever are at like AEW shows all the time mm-hmm. like I mean we don't know what kind of contract he signed but I assume it's one that that would, would allow yeah. him to do that yeah exactly and like Moose has done AEW shows too so like that might mean that he's more Moose. likely to do that I know we all were like bye Moose Thank you so much for going to WWE. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, great. If I'll see you around. <laughs> yeah, and I like that he got to keep his name and his character and his you music. You can see his tattoos better with TNA's cameras than you really? can with ROH's cameras. That's good. I honestly never knew that Moose had tattoos until I saw him live, and I was like, mm-hmm, me too. Oh, he's like covered. Oh, in yeah. Tattoos. Totally covered. But then you can kind of see him with a. Uh, with TNA's cameras and I was like oh you can see him that's nice because I like tattoos so I was like nice yeah um, but then him and like Lashley kind of got into it mm-hmm. so I, I I assume there's gonna be a Lashley oh yes yeah. mm-hmm. which will be awesome yeah I'm excited for that that'll be super awesome yeah yeah what else happened um knockouts is there anything going on last here? week um the week before last night uh Marty Bell and Jade got into a street fight that was really fun I'm really digging Marty Bell I don't love Jade um I get like lots of people like her independent stuff I don't I'm not super familiar yeah, with it I, I really like more Bell. prefer her independent stuff yeah um this week was a fatal four-way it was Kim, Gail Kim and Jade and Marty Bell and Sienna with Allie on the outside Sienna retained um but it was a pretty it, it was a pretty good match cool what else happened oh so remember last week where I was like the bromans they like watched a video or Robbie E. saw that Raquel and Jesse yes. Goddard were talking. So what it is is that Jesse was like, look, Robbie, you can't keep a secret. So we just didn't tell you, but it has nothing to do with you. What it is is we got on camera Rosemary making out with Bram. And then, uh-huh. they, yeah, and then they showed it to Decay to like get them off their game um, when they wrestled. But then this week, Bram was fighting – abyss with crazy steve on the outside and everyone was like where's rosemary but then rosemary came out and looked super confused Mm -hmm. and then like confusedly like touched steve's face and then confusedly like looked at bram and like kind of touched his face and then abyss looked confused and then like she like almost kissed bram but then like looked confused i don't know what the fuck is going on weird It's, it's super weird i don't know what's going on so i hope there's like good payoff it's not like inappropriate or weird or anything it's just like i don't know where the storyline is going right it's more like but it's compelling in that like i want to know what's going on so i want to keep watching it cool even though bram is in it yeah i mean decay <laughs> made you care about abyss and then made you care about bram so they must be doing something yeah, but very abyss right isn't like a, an actual monster <laughs> <laughs> true so there's like a little bit of difference that's true that's true uh i think that's really all that happened okay 
uh, NXT that's not happening at this moment that we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what what is going to be cool is that when TNA moves to Thursdays is that we'll be able to like. It'll be. Ac- yeah. It'll be like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll uh, be up to date. But SmackDown will be. But whatever. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. We we need to figure that out. Well, I don't want to like watch SmackDown and record. I mean, I don't know. It's going to be complicated. I know. We're going to have to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> we basically can only record on Tuesdays, except for the rare Wednesday we have to record while yeah. I'm not in school. So Because I went to a Violent Femmes concert and they were super good. Mm-hmm. And Monday I sat at a bunch of cake naked. So. Yeah, well, living the dream. <laughs> yeah, one well, of my friends wanted to do a naked photo shoot for her birthday when we were all like behind balloons and stuff. It was mm-hmm. super, super fun. But then at the end, we obviously just sat at a bunch of cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's kind of porny at the end. We were all laughing about it. We were like, this kind of turned porny. But, like, it was it was all girls except for a photographer who was male. But he's, like, he does, like, lots of, like, nude photo shoots. And he does, like, nude art drawings. Mm-hmm. He's got, like, a wife and a kid. Like, so yeah. it, it wasn't, like, weird at all. It was just us being, like, weird. And, like, it was so much fun, though. That's fun. But yeah, so that's why we're recording Wednesday. Because I sat in some cake naked. And then I went to a violent <laughs> <laughs> perfect <laughs> absolutely perfect we're just yeah. living the dream just living the dream man okay so last week on nxt there were only a couple of matches it was um bailey versus alexa bliss, alexa bliss. Mm-hmm. it was a really good match it was, it was really was good so good mm-hmm. both of I them look great i'm so hot for alexa bliss she has just gotten better and better and better I'm and better all about it yeah me too they put on it it was the first time in a while where i was like yes Bailey. Move both of them up. Just move both of them up. Like, they're Whatever. both ready to come up. Why not? Also, if they... I, I talked about this on Twitter today. If they put two men in charge of SmackDown and don't put any fucking women on that roster, I, I'm, I might not watch it. Like, and that's kind of shitty. Cause Which would we, make our podcast much easier. It would make it a lot <laughs> easier. And, like, there's a lot of people I like on that. But, like, don't say you're having a women's revolution and then have a show without any fucking women on it. Just going to throw that out there. So, But if Shane's in charge, he's, like, the different one. So I can't imagine that they would not put any women on it. I would hope not. <laughs> They can't be that fucking stupid. There's been some rumors. <laughs> they can't be that fucking stupid. I would fucking hope not. We'll see. Anyway, that's just a sidebar. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to see who their general managers are. Daniel Bryan is the SmackDown manager. Oh, duh. They leaked it that on makes accident. Because <laughs> they're dumb as shit. That makes a lot of sense. I'm fine yeah, with that. I am too. And I think it makes a lot of sense too, especially if they're going to So that's move. why you're like, you can't have two men in charge and then not. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And like... If Stephanie were to pick a woman and then they put all of the women on that show, like... Oh, what woman would she pick? I don't know. I feel like she's going to pick Vicky. It would be hilarious, but Vicky doesn't want to be part of I wrestling know. anymore. I did like her, like, cameo. It was really... That was so It funny. was great to see her, I honestly. I do, too. I loved her a little bit with Dolph Ziggler, where he was like, I don't know who this woman is. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. <crying. laughs> <laughs> Made me like Dolph Ziggler for a hot second. That for was pretty... one tiny second. Yep, that was nice. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, but then Bailey, Bailey won in that match. Yep. Oh, it was, like, close a yep. couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, made Alexa look really good, even she though she looked, lost. Yeah, she looked fantastic. And then Bailey did her Bailey speech of like, "I'm coming back." Um, but it was like a little bit more aggressive then. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like a little had a like a little bit more of an edge, which was great. And then Naya came out and was like, "I'll drop you where you stand." And so they're gonna fight again. Awesome. Naya looked hot. She looks great in Wrestle Casual. I she was so into so it. So hot. I was like, damn. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Was into it. Good looking woman. So they're going to wrestle again. Mm-hmm. And then we had, it was supposed to be Blake and Murphy um, and the Hype Bros versus each other, but then Rhino came back and was like, Oh, that's right. Gore, 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 everybody. Gore. He was like, I lost my election, everyone. Everybody gets a gore. <laughs> um, and then it was the two out of three falls. The um, revival, uh, American Alpha. It was fucking great. It was such a good match. Like, it. I was really surprised how long it took them to get their oh, first yeah, pinfall. Oh, yeah, I liked that, though. It had a lot of suspense because of that. Yeah, there was so much buildup to it, and then it was just like, boom, boom, boom. All three of them were done, basically. And it, that was like, great. It was very, very good. It was a great match. And Jason, we got to see Jason Jordan sell, and he was like a significant part of the first, of the beginning of that match, too. And like that's not something we really get to see from him, since Gable is the one who normally does that. And it was great. He's good at it. They're both so good at it. Yeah. 
It I was, was really good. Really, really surprised but that the revival won. Really, I I wasn't. I think it makes sense for them to retain for a while. Well, I am. I agree with that, but I'm surprised because American Alpha is so hot right now. Yeah. But I have a feeling they're gonna get caught up in the draft. So it you makes got lots of feelings, Aaron. Well, they need a lot of people, and like they're reaching really heavily into their old rosters to bring people back to be supporting talent, yeah. and so like. That also makes me think that, like, why would they just leave all of these people behind when you can kind of upgrade everything? Oh. A friend of ours is calling. <laughs> we cannot answer Who lives it. in Utah? Hi, yes. CJ. Hi, CJ. Yeah, it was a really, it was a good match. I'm excited to watch Nakamura and Finn. Obviously, there's oh, yeah. a bunch of promo packages. Oh, they also had, like, a little promo package for TM61. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I don't remember is that, that. Is that right? TM61? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. It was basically like, we're here, we're great, we're Australian, blah. Awesome. We do flips. But I'm into it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you watch SmackDown this week? Yes. I don't think that I did. I did. Um, it all kind of blurs together for me after a while, though. Yeah. I heard that the um, Uso-Seth uh, Rollins match was very good. Oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. And uh, I feel like there was a funny Miz thing, too. Hmm. There's lots of funny Miz things all the time. I though, mean, that happens all Miz the time. Is great. Though, I am assuming, and I even though Miz is Bay, I do want Darren Young to get the IC title. Me I feel too. like after, after all that buildup. Me too. Which I hated it at first. I and love like, it. I came around on those little clips. I came around on all of it. I like Bob Backlin as a manager for Darren Young. It actually works really well. When they're in the same place together, too, you really see it. I think it yeah. helped, too, that... Like Darren Young posted that video of Bob Backlund riding down the escalator. Oh my God, that was insane. That was insane, and I think that that was the first moment where it was like, oh, one, Bob Backlund is still bananas. He's still a bananas human being, and two, they obviously have good chemistry together, and you right. could just even see that in that like small, like thirty second clip. And then to yeah. see them together on Raw, it was like, oh, okay, yeah, I I'm see where really this is looking going. Forward to that, so I I hope that Darren Young wins. Yeah, I completely agree. But unfortunately, if Darren won, Young wins, that means Zack Ryder's probably going to lose. Can't, I don't know. Can't switch them both. Though Zack Ryder is hot, hot, hot right now. Yeah, I think it depends on who goes where in the draft. That's Honestly, true. like, both, we could get two new champions depending on where they want to put that belt and who's drafted to which show. Yeah. So, That's I true. don't know. I really hope Zack Ryder <laughs> wins the belt. Like, I Me want too. Rusev to have it, but at the same time, like, Bruce is about to get married. Like, he's going to need to take some time that's off. That's true. That's true. I didn't even think about that. Also, get on out of here. <laughs> um, I had a funny thought today. Like, Maria, I was watching TNA, and Maria Canales came out in a really cute, like, black half shirt and mermaid booty shorts, which in my head, <laughs> in my head I was like, I have those shorts. Um, but mine are purple mermaid scales. But she always, unless she's in her wrestling gear, she always comes out in different crazy ass outfits. I know, I like it. And I was like, how come it doesn't bother me that she, her outfits are like inconsistent other than they're like short and like sexy, but it really bothers me when Lana's are inconsistent. And I was like, I think it's just because Maria has such a defined character and is a consistent character and she's so good at what she does. But because Lana is lately at least, really only a visual thing yeah it really it bothers me that she is not at least visually consistent i think that's a good way to look at that too because i i i think maria does have some i hated that i called her visual thing i didn't mean like that but like she is her character is a visual thing right now yeah she's not not really talking there's not a lot of character other than the the character we already know like right if you came in and just started watching Raw and you didn't know that Lana used to be a badass powerhouse, you would just be like, oh, she's like a hot girl. She's comes just a valet, ring. yeah. Like, you wouldn't even know that she With a wrestled diamond ever. choker. <sighs> Whatever, those are really popular right now. Yeah, they're popular for, like, 22-year-olds who, like... Oh, no, they're very popular. I just don't Brie understand. Brie Bella is wearing one at the ESPYs at this moment. Yeah, but Brie Bella can do whatever she wants. And it's also a lot nicer. <laughs> also, Brie Bella is like a weird, like, hippie lady. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's very true. Brie Mount forever. <laughs> I don't know. Just Lana bothers me. Yeah, I know. We all know Lana bothers me. I know. I don't know. I think that Maria does have some consistency to her look, though, that it... it her hair always looks the same. Yeah, her hair looks the same. Like, her aesthetic is always the same. Right. Even if the way that her outfits are put together isn't always the same the same consistent all the way all the time the aesthetic of her look is the same right that's the problem with lana's look is that she is sometimes like fun flirty beach girl sometimes sexy secretary sometimes 
trashy lingerie model. Like there is no consistency to yeah. like other than like the I'm core hot. of the character. Right. The the core seems to be I am hot. And yeah. with Maria, it's I am a strong, powerful woman, and I can wear whatever the fuck I want because I look amazing and everything. Whereas Lana is here is this cookie cutter version of what some people think is hot and will just land on one is what it feels like. Yeah, it's weird. It has been more consistent lately, though. At least. Yeah, mm-hmm, that's true. So, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Zack Ryder is the best. <clears throat> he lost, though. Yes, he did. Again, but he gets a championship Sheamus, shot. But he gets a championship up. I accept your... I accept your... I accept. <laughs> right? Like, I'm confused about this chain of events, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Fine. That's fine. That's um, fine. We had a Brizango. I don't remember who they wrestled. I just remember that Nicole came over and watched uh, Raw with us. Brizango wrestled the Lucha Dragons. Oh, okay. That's right. So I was trying to explain to her what Brizango <laughs> is. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of color happening in that match because the Lucha mm. Dragons new gear is like lime green, purple, and silver, which looks dope. And then Brizango's was like hot pink, purple, and like blue. <laughs> and I was like, so much happening. It's like Asuka split into four different people. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Brizango's the best. Mm-hmm. Sasha Banks beat up Dana. Oh my God. That match, it was the main event, which was weird like yeah because i guess the talking segment ended it i know i was like when they were like good night everybody i was like wait what yeah like it fucking out it was weird that that was the main event it it went they gave them so much time which great super great i'm really glad they gave them as much time as they did they did not know what to do with all that time and it became obvious towards the end i like i like dana a lot we like dana but like dana is still fucking really green yeah exactly and Charlotte and Sasha could have done that. Yeah, absolutely. But like, but Sasha always also got a talking segment, which was great. Yeah, the interaction between Charlotte and Sasha at the end was weird. I, it, it's like you were saying before; they're trying to recreate something that already happened, and so it feels kind of stiff. It does it feels very stiff sometimes? I don't know. I did like. I think that Charlotte is doing a lot of good heel work. I think that I she still has a lot of work to do, but it, it's obvious that she's much more comfortable as a heel. And like her angry. Squeak. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I just had to read you. That's right. Uh, her, like, angry, sour face clapping was, like, the best thing ever. I fucking loved that. I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. I think, honestly, the big problem with it is that they are trying to recreate something that already happened. Yep. Exactly. And sometimes so. that shit doesn't work. Yep. So, we'll see. Again. It wasn't the worst draft. thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. I don't think it was the worst thing. Um, I mean, I like Dana, but I don't think that she was ready to main event a Raw Agreed. They are pushing her super fast, and they're lucky that she is good. They're lucky that she learns quickly. Yeah, exactly. And can clearly listen in the ring as well, yeah. which is good. And so they're not having, like, another Red Menace bomb. But if they're care- if they're not careful, they're going to, like... They're going to push into that territory. Exactly. Um, Let's see, what else? John Cena, Nenzo, and Cass in the club. Like, that's all happening. Mm-hmm. Beat up John Cena. The club seems so much more comfortable. Like they, they seem like they've really fallen into their characters yeah. now. I, it, I care about them not because they're the, they were the Bullet Club, but because they are this new club in WWE, and I, I like it. I think they're, do, they're all Speaking doing great. The, the, th- the six of them is, it's gonna be pretty entertaining. I saw a really funny like uh, Pokemon thing. So in the Pokemon Go game, you can get eggs and you can put them in the incubator and you can walk them. It's very similar to when they did the Poke Walker, um, and then if you walk like five k kilometers. Um, you the egg will hatch and you'll you'll oh, get okay. like a new Pokemon or whatever. And there was a thing where it was like hatching, 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 and then it just went John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> I made mean, laugh out loud today. <laughs> Those John Cena memes are all fucking. They hilarious. really are hilarious. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Send us your favorite ones. Who's yelling John Cena at the beginning. <laughs> it's yeah. really funny. <laughs> I think that's going to be very entertaining. Yeah, I agree. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I, the Rollins and, uh, and and Roman thing was really funny. Too. I loved it. It was funny because Nicole was like genuinely confused, and I was like, "These are this is not 
these are different. The joke is that he took an old interview. Right. And And she was like, like, oh, (laughs) okay. And I saw someone comment on that later. Like, I wonder how many casual people did not understand that. And I was like, at least one. We're going to have a casual fan on our podcast next week. Julie's going to be on. Yeah. So our friend Julie has been watching, like, the past, like, four, since WrestleMania has been watching the pay-per-views. Yes. And occasionally we'll watch Monday Night Night Raw, but not really. Like, she just has a friend who watches it. Um, who is also kind of a casual f- fan. You could tell this because her favorite is John Cena. Um, <laughs> but so I wanted to have Julianne before she moves away because she's moving to Pennsylvania because she got into grad school and we're all very happy for her or whatever. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to have her on before she moves so we could get like the perspective of an actual, yes. like a very casual fan. Yeah, absolutely. I would actually like to try and talk to more casual fans. Yeah. I think we should that's, get Nicole on. Yeah, we, sh- we should definitely talk to Nicole. My friend Brooke, too, that lives in California. Um, would be interesting to hear from a male casual fan. Yeah. <laughs> We have a lot of men on the show, even though this is a feminist wrestling podcast. But I think it's interesting to talk to to get a lot of different kinds of casual fan Agreed. experiences, especially since it's how WWE books is based on a casual fan. So I think it's important and uh, interesting for someone who's very involved to like think about oh yeah. oh I see this is why they do this. Uh, what else? Is Kevin Owens had something with. So no, Kevin Owens was fighting Cesaro, but Sami Zayn was on commentary, and Kevin Owens wouldn't go out to commentary. Oh, that's or wouldn't right. go out to the ring because he felt unsafe because Sami Zayn was right. there. It was very funny. <laughs> that's um, right. I forgot about that. Speaking of things that are uh, unsafe, oh, unsafe geez. for my eyes, is the fucking faux deletion. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Words I never thought would come out of my mouth. TNA did that so much better. <laughs> so much right, better. Right, because like, it was like, oh, well, TNA's going to have these recorded segments. I guess we'll do one, too. We'll make New Day go to the Wyatt compound. But the thing is, is like, the it Matt had- Hardy ones are commentaries, and they're supposed to be terrible and stupid. This one was serious and terrible and stupid. Yeah, exactly. And there's no there's story. No, there was no story. It was just like... New- the Wyatt's got honestly, owned in their backyard. Like, what the fuck? Why, why did that happen? I just don't understand. I watched it, and I, I didn't even know that the Wyatt's lost. I was so yeah. con- I was so confused about all of it. Mm-hmm. I was like, what is happening? It was bad. I honestly have no idea what the fuck is happening right now. Like, there were a lot of people who were like, the final deletion ruined wrestling. It's just, like, the worst thing I've ever seen. And, like, shut up. Just shut up about it. Like, it was. It started as a fucking vaudeville back after the 20s. The like, same, I just can't even deal with that anymore. At the same time, like, everything else on TNA is still regular wrestling. Right, And exactly. there's some really fucking good storylines. Yeah. And then they have this one storyline that's silly and one weird. One crazy-ass match is not going to ruin wrestling. Five million crazy-ass wrestlers aren't going to ruin wrestling. It's the Hardys, and you kind of have to respect that they're, they're insane! A, they're insane, and B, they're doing something new. They've been around for, like, 20 years, and yeah. they're doing new shit. Right, How exactly. How many other wrestlers that have been around that long are doing new shit? Right, exactly. Not and, that many. And, like... People say that shit about Final Deletion, whatever. Have your own wrong opinion. That's fine. I don't care. But, like, I can... You have to think that it was the best thing ever, but you have to admit that it's, like, genius on on many different, like, marketing ways. Absolutely. I completely agree. Even if 10 people who never watched TNA before continue to watch it after the hundreds of thousands of people that had never watched TNA that got drawn to this, if... A hundred people remain. That's more than they started with. Like, that's good. And that's, yeah. like, super smart on their part. And it got also, everyone talking about the that. Show, the rest of the show for the past two weeks has been good. All of the mm. stuff with Mike Bennett has been fucking really, really yeah. good. All the stuff with Lashley and Eddie Edwards has been really good. Oh, Davey Richards is back. Oh, good. So That's good. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing. We didn't do a Pope watch. Uh, the street <laughs> fight. Just rewind. The street fight uh, between Marty Bell and Jade, there was a uh, baking sheet. And then... Pope said, Marty knows how to use that boat, or no, both these women know how to use that baking sheet better in the ring than they ever did in the kitchen. Pope watch. Oh my God. We don't have a lot of Pope watches because I fast forward through a lot of TNA commentary. <laughs> but. That's one of them. <laughs> that is a Pope watch. Oh my God. <laughs> I was going to say that I feel like you. If you were going to make a case for stuff that's ruining wrestling, that the new day deletion, the new deletion is actually something like that. It's wrestling that takes itself way too seriously and that doesn't understand why the thing that it's copying was good. Also, like at that the is same bad. Time, this feud could be fucking really brilliant. It could be. 
But I don't. They, after that, like I had a lot I don't of give hopes for it. A after fuck. that, I'm like, well, you guys ruined it again. Yeah, like I don't give a shit. And like, just fire all the Wyatts because you fucking ruin them every time. Absolutely, and like all of them looks. Braun Strowman was fucking shirtless and looked good, and I don't understand how that happened. But it was totally lost in the fact, and like he had a somebody had a fucking pickaxe, like that should have been awesome, and it was horrible. The, editing, it, it's the shaky weird, camera was it's fucking weird because awful. They like tried to edit it like a, a Wyatt's promo video, yeah. mm-hmm. but because of the editing, you literally didn't know what was going on. No, it was like, so confusing. Again, I watched it and I couldn't tell who won. Yeah. And like, I like the idea of Xavier being kidnapped and having to come back to get them out of it. But like, why? What? Why does it? Ma- why didn't they just kidnap Xavier and that be the end of that? At least then something would have come of it. It just like, it was totally fifty fifty booking. It made no sense. Yeah, and it didn't honestly, move it had the story some weird. Forward. It had some weird. Um, God, what is that? It had some like weird deliverance overtones that were uncomfortable. Yeah, it was fucking weird. And it, was it was weird and uncomfortable. It was bad. It was just really, really bad. I loved how many. I loved Rebby Sky, fucking flipping out on Twitter like, I didn't see "This that. looks familiar." L M F A O O O. Man. And Senior Benjamin. I have come around on Rebby Sky so hard. Ride or die, man. That, I, that but, bitch is ride or die, and I'm all about it. Also, she went down a fire pole this week with. Maxwell on her back so like damn good for her I mean it was a short fire pole but like still also, I want to know is where they're filming Matt Hardy's actual house yes. because his house is fucking dope yeah that's those are their actual houses the way you get into Maxwell's bedroom is by a secret door <laughs> you they pull a, a book and it opens the door into this like magical kid paradise what the fuck and then, and then to get into one of the ways you get into the movie theater is by a fucking fire pole <laughs> It's so dope. That's so awesome. Matt, uh, Jeff Hardy's house was dumb, though. It was just like bright blue with a bunch of Yeah, it photos. was really, really was blue. Like, oh, my God. You get really, blue. really fucked up in this house. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm looking up Robbie's guy's Twitter. You keep talking about that. Uh, it, oh, you uh, said Senior Benjamin said something? Yeah. Um, somebody said something about them needing Senior Benjamin, and Senior Benjamin tweeted, and he was like, they can't afford Senior Benjamin. Good luck with your massacre. <laughs> Oh my god! I want to follow Senior Benjamin. Why am I not following Senior Benjamin? Oh, he is the first one to come up. Oh my god, so funny. Miss, what's it say? It says Guy Wyatt. Yeah. Or that's that must be a Spanish word that I don't understand. G E G U E Y. Wyatt, Mr. Hardy had dirty redneck gimmick before you were born. Your battlefield is looking bad. <laughs> I love it. Bray Wyatt, because he said, lest we forget, without Bray Wyatt, perhaps no one would have been broken in the first place. Go ahead and lie. Say it isn't true. I am the way. Yep. It's funny that Bray was the one that started it on Twitter, too, and Matt Hardy was like, I don't give a fuck. My that company Wyatt- doesn't care if I talk to you. <laughs> well, yeah, because they were also like... You can't go over to Mr. McCann. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I love it. Yeah, if you the haven't Wyatt's looked up. The can't afford, or the Wyatt's can't afford Senior Benjamin. Um, oh, my God. Oh, that was so, so good. That was the best part that came of the new dilution, was all of the stuff from the TNA people being like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> whoever runs a Senior Benjamin account is really funny, because somebody tweeted, I think C- Benjamin Senior is because uh, that's his at handle is the quickest TNA thing ever to become viral. Everyone loves Senior Benjamin, and then he just wrote, "Gracias." <laughs> uh, oh yeah, thank you for thinking of Senior Benjamin. But why it's why it brothers cannot afford Senior Benjamin? Buena suerte and your massacre. <laughs> oh, so funny! Uh, I love it. <laughs> Broken it's Matt great. Hardy forever. <laughs> I love that WWE has actually let people do interpromotional Twitter stuff now. Yeah. It's smart. It's super, super smart. And it like brings over your IWC fans that are involved in that and can see you interacting with other people online. Like it, all the New Day uh, Bullet Club stuff, like all of that stuff is gold. It, it's just so smart. It's free advertising. Right. Why also, not? Also, Matt Hardy trolls uh, the, the TNA. Ever since he <laughs> won the Hardy brand, he trolls TNA's Twitter all the time. It's like, every time you use my intellectual property, you owe me money. <laughs> I will send you a cease and desist, TNA. <laughs> so funny. It's 
<laughs> oh, here's the video, the true friendship of Vanguard One and <laughs> Oh my <laughs> and god, it's so cute. He looks so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! It's, it's the so happiest good. that broken Matt Hardy has ever looked, even when looking at his own child. Weirdly, yeah, right? <laughs> Maxwell is getting really fucking cute. Uh, I love it. I just love everything about it. See, WWE, we just wound up talking about the final deletion. Like you totally failed in your mission to get us to talk about WWE in this way. Like, sorry, dummy. Totally failed. Uh, woof. Yeah, I mean, this past week I had Raw on in the background, but I watched TNA. Like, yeah. that's the difference. Oh, um, also, Raw ended with like what we knew was going to happen, which is Shane's going to be the leader of SmackDown and Stephanie's going to be the leader of Raw. Yep. I mean, th- I was McMahon slowly was like, crawling to this. I want blood. Yeah. I'm Vince. I will say that that's the most consistent thing about that story is that Vince came out a month ago and was like, kill each other, and then came back and was like, you didn't kill each other. What the fuck happened? That's true. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Vince, for being a, real, a really shitty parent. Break the law, but don't get caught. Like, oh, man, yeah. I wish my parents said that. <laughs> Break the law, but don't get caught. I, I love that part. <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk about Lucha. Okay. I was surprised at the format when I was watching it. Yeah, I was I did too. Not, I did not anticipate it, but it was super fun yeah it was really fun it was a smart way to be like here's the first hours of this bonkers ass show this the first of four hours but it's just gonna cover this one thing which was super smart i mean it had ultimately six people in it yeah i guess so yeah Yeah. i guess you're right so it was great yeah Mm -hmm. so we opened with so we find out that it's gonna be like a tournament so it's the four and the unique opportunity but it's gonna be Cage and the Mac in a Falls Count Anywhere match, kind of like recreating their match from last year, but taking it farther. Yeah. And then Tejano and... I forgot it was the two of them that had that mm-hmm. match last year, too. That's bananas. And they kicked off Ultimate Lucha, Ultima Lucha last year. That's right, they did. Um, and that was Tejano and Son of Havoc in a bar fight. Oh, my God. <laughs> was, which was nuts. And then it was like, whoever wins those is going to be in the final for the the unique opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um so the first match was bonkers. Bonkers. Yep. It was great. I was excited that we got blue balled on the stunner to only then get an awesome stunner later. And even like, more awesome stunner. Uh, great. Yeah, when he when Cage threw Mac into the wooden stands, I was like, oh. Oh yeah. Fuck. That was hard. Oh, and you could tell that he was like, Mac was like, God on my body. In my head, I was like, how are they literally not breaking each other's backs right now? Yeah, seriously. They beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, they did. It was brutal. Uh, I love the like Elvis hips that the Mac did, and then sl- smash the the Mexico guitar over yes. Cage's head. That was a real guitar too. That was bananas. Oh, yeah. I also liked that. So the Cage and um, Mac match was really a false count anywhere. Like really, really all over the place. Yes, absolutely. Then the bar fight was kind of all over the place, but stayed alive in the ring. Mm-hmm. And then the. The third fight, which was also a false count anywhere, was was a lot in the ring. I liked yeah. how it like gradually just became a like about the wrestling in the ring, right? Exactly. Because it made sense that so obviously, uh, well not obviously, shockingly the Mac won. Yeah, I was really surprised that the Mac won. <laughs> I was really glad that the Mac won Me too. Me too. I like that it came down to two baby faces in the final of that Me tournament too. too. Two very very different baby faces. Right, and in the end, it, it makes sense since we had... Right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, and it was also because I do believe that Cage won last year. It was nice to see Mac win well, Yeah, this I year. guess you're right. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, the blue ball stunner was funny. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, that bar match was nuts. Tejano took a motherfucking beating. Tejano went through the bar on a bunch of, I mean, I'm sure it, most of it, if not all of it, was sugar glass, but it was that still... That stuff still hurts. still like, hurts, and it still yeah. was, like, all up in it's, him. Yeah, he, it's, like, stuck in your back. In all, my head, all sugar glass is is weak plastic, so he just had a shitload of plastic stuck into him. In my head, I was like, how do you prep for these types of matches? Like, you you, you're <laughs> like, but you know, you're like, okay, I'm losing. Mm-hmm. I'm going through that whole bar full of, like, sugar glass. Yeah. And wood. And yeah. you just have to be like, all right, YOLO. Yeah, for sure. He went into that fucking pile of barstool limbs. Oh, that yeah, was, that was fucked. That, that was, that was fucked. worse than like going through the bar. I agree. Like being on all that glass, not great. Like that, that sucks. But going into that post sticking straight up in the middle of that pile, like total disregard for your body. It, it was bananas. It was so brutal. Ugh, it was 
It was great. But it Both was so of them. Good. It was the most I've ever cared about Tejano too. Yeah, like, agreed. I, I don't normally care about him, even though I think he's a very good wrestler, and I I cared about that match. Also, I liked the premise of it. It was like bikers and cowboys love bar fights. Yes, <laughs> I love that, and I loved how much Dario we got. I thought he it was, was so weird. great. <laughs> the one thing I didn't like, I didn't like going into Dario's office. That was weird. Not in a cutscene. It yeah. just it made his office feel too much like a set. Yeah, it was really weird. I didn't like that part. That was the only part that I was like, no. But I did like how Black Lotus was like there the whole time. Yeah, me too. It was um, nice to see her. Agreed. And so Havoc won. So then we got Mac and Havoc in a pretty traditional like babyface versus babyface. Like they definitely took it to each other. Yeah. But like, you know, they shook hands at the beginning. Um, it was a good match. All three of the matches were good. But so Havoc wins. Everyone freaks out because it's like, yeah, that's our guy. And you can hear Vampiro putting him over. He's like, yeah, he's the like chosen one of the temple. Like mm-hmm. the crowd really like goes for him. Blah blah blah. Like we've seen him grow. So he used to be a bad guy. Yeah, he did used to be a bad guy. Which is super weird because he's like ultra baby face now. <laughs> Yeah, if you think about it, he came in and kept losing. Yep. And it was like a little... Like, yeah, he has a very interesting um, arc. Because he's been there from, I think, episode one. I think, I think right, he was yeah. in episode one. Him and Ivelisse. Mm-hmm. And then they had their whole falling out. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've had huge character arcs. But uh, Dario comes out with Black Lotus. Black Lotus has two briefcase. And Dario's like, look, you know, you shocked me. I didn't think it was going to be you two. And then I didn't think it was going to be you. But, like, you got, I got two briefcases. I got 250 thousand dollars cash cash monies right here Mm -hmm. or i got this it's a contract you can be in the main event of ultima lucha trace and then everyone's like take the money don't take the money take the contract oh everybody's freaking out and then you know true baby face obviously you could give me 250 million dollars i would always take the contract for wrestling (laughs) (laughs) but then of course dario is dario and he's like okay Oh, you don't want the money? Oh, okay. okay. But if you want the contract, you gotta go through one more match. And at this point, he's gone through two brutal matches. Right. Uh, so Famous B comes out, and he's like, I'm Famous B, blah, blah, blah. And then this guy comes out that everybody popped for, but Alexis didn't pop for because I, I don't didn't know. know who he was. Me it, either. It was really <laughs> weird. It was a very weird moment to be like, man, we got all the way to the top of the show, and I and the big reveal was like, Kilo. I was like, Doctor, what? Who? What? Like, I, I, it was, and he was really botchy. Like, it was because he's old. I think it was super weird, and like maybe one of the most disappointed I've ever been in Lucha Underground. It was just so weird. It felt like, like that whole episode was very good right up until the end because it just felt like everything was meaningless. Dr. Wagner Jr. Yeah, like, it, like, why did they, all four of them just went through this for nothing so that we could introduce this character that, like, I don't know? (laughs) Well, I think, okay, so I'm Googling him right now. Mm -hmm. He is a big triple A person. I kind of figured. He worked for New Japan for a while. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, known for his catchphrase during promo, bien, bien, bien. Yep, that's what Famous Beast Jacket said all over yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, he has been wrestling since 1996. Oh, jeez. He does lots of AAA stuff. He's mo- I thought, yeah, he's mostly just a AAA guy. He's like a big AAA guy. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess, like, I guess if we knew more about tri- AAA, we would have freaked out. But I guess it is cool that they are, you know, other companies bring in people all the time. But I like that Lucha's like, we're going to bring in a guy that if you really love Luchador wrestling, right. this You'll is going to mean a lot to you. It's right. not a Rey Mysterio where it's like everyone knows Rey Mysterio. It's like, right. if you love Luchador wrestling, if you love AAA, this is going to mean a ton to you. Right. And who knows? Maybe maybe he the storyline they have before him in season three is dope. Yeah, we'll see. I'm like I want I obviously want to learn more about him, and I feel like now he's gonna have something with Son of Havoc, and like I'm into that. And it was cool to have like Famous B's client win. Yeah, it was. I like how Famous B was like, I got a client that's already famous. Like, I'm skip that really step. <laughs> you just skip that step. I my favorite part of that actually was Famous B taking the money and like refusing to let Brenda touch any. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah. Our money. It's our money. <laughs> yeah, I liked how Vampiro was like, that's 
Dr. Wagner's money. <laughs> That's his money. He's been mega champion two times. Oh, okay. Tejano's the longest reigning mega champion, right? Yeah. Okay. But he also wrestled for some other He Mexican. wrestled for WCW ages ago. I don't see that on there. Well, Vampiro talked about it on commentary, so <laughs> that's the only reason that I well, know Wikipedia about that. Well, Wikipedia does not say that, but maybe he was there for like a little bit. Yeah. It's also possible that they wrestled in some WCW capacity that was not televised. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't say in Wikipedia. Whatever. It was a good match, though, with a weird payoff, but, like, the payoff wasn't for us. Yeah, exactly. So, it, it was weird fine. to not be part of the payoff, but whatever. The whole episode was so good that, like, fuck, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Tonight's will and be great. we watched about ten minutes of the other one. Yes. This, we, this night, we, so we know the first two people got eliminated in the gift of the guy. Yep, sort of. Also, Night Claw's mask is weird. Yeah, I like don't it. don't like it. I do. I think it's interesting. Got big, fat cheeks. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's a jungle cat. All right, well, we did it. We did it. Good job. Um, anything coming up to pimp? The new, just the Plan 9 show that's on July 28th. It's our Christmas show. All right. That's it. All right. Uh, where can people find you on the internet? They can find me at Stella underscore Cheeks. You can still find me on my Twitter at Stella's Cheeks, but I had to make it private because there's there. Uh, I just was like, if I'm going to post pictures in my butt, with cake on it I'm fine with that but like if somebody <laughs> else found out like if they like googled my name and it's like oh you're up for this job oh she's got a butt full of cake <laughs> I was like maybe not great so I made it private but I will approve you <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me at Earn Gen C. Um, oh we have the Tumblr question we'll have to do that next week because it's not a doing... really easy question oh do you want do you want the Tumblr one? question is what promotions or um, matches would you recommend that I show my like young daughter they already oh. watch Shakara they want okay. other suggestions for appropriate wrestling to watch with their children which if you have ideas too yeah. obviously um, please say I my gut which I don't know why he wouldn't already be showing his daughter this but like all of the the Sasha Bailey stuff yeah I agree I think like, all of the bottom. yeah I think all of the women's wrestling in NXT is yeah, a great I race I can't think of anything that would be like inappropriate in yeah there. I agree like I mean there are some hard matches in there but like if right. you especially I mean, if you're violent matches yeah but. but if you're especially focusing on like women's wrestling too I think that all of the women's stuff from there is good um what else? What's some other good? I would say like, like a lot of. Um, I mean, at least within the past two years of me watching, I would say, well, sans the dollhouse stuff. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of the women's stuff in in TNA is pretty good too. If you like mm -hmm. watch like Gail Kim stuff, that would be yeah. good. Um, and in terms of like male wrestlers to show a young girl, I actually think Dalton Castle is really good for that because I, I feel agree. like you're if you're young enough, you don't really understand that like subtext in it that you as a parent will understand and enjoy. But like he's a flashy character, and like that's good for young kids because they uh, identify with that. It might be a little confusing if they watch Shakara because he is in Shakara as Ashley Remington. Yeah, although but, that's an interesting but that's way. That's also to, a pretty like flamboyant character. Yeah, and I think that's also an interesting way to like move them into other parts of wrestling and like you have to have that Santa conversation at some point. Like yeah, agreed. <laughs> So I think that if you're at that point, that showing her Dal Dalton Castle is a good way to go through that, too. Yeah, I think NXT in general, too. Not just yeah. the women's stuff in NXT. I can't, mm -hmm. like, they've, to, so ever since I've been watching, there hasn't been any, like, I mean, there's been some brutal matches, but not, like, inappropriate matches for kids. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, think of how many kids are there. Do you think Bailey hates Izzy? I don't know. It kind of feels like it. It feels like Izzy is gotten to that age where she's starting to feel like a little bratty and entitled like all kids at that age do right. and it's just that she happens to be like a low-key wrestling fan celebrity now and she's like 11 so <laughs> i don't know yeah. Ailey, like bailey like side hugs her like sure yeah. okay whatever is he yeah mm -hmm. izzy whatever just draws a lot did. of focus she does. I think that's part of it. Is like Izzy has become a part of her character. I want the background on my computer to be Sasha Banks making Izzy cry. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. So <laughs> funny. Not great to show your daughter, but we would really like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to show your daughter. Tell her if she gets too big for her britches, Sasha Banks will come and tear her down. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, yeah. If you guys else, if anyone else has suggestions for good, avoid all of the nineties. Yeah, pretty much avoid all of the 90s. That is true. Um, you know, honestly, I think, too, that stuff from, like, 
Um, like Macho Man and Steamboat WrestleMania three. That's a great match to show a young kid. That's just good wrestling. Just good like fun wrestling, it's yeah. not. There's no like bad storyline. There's no like objectifying anybody. It's just like really good wrestling. I feel like that's a good place to start with kids too. Like just show them really good wrestling. It doesn't necessarily have to be aimed for kids. Just showing them stuff that's people doing wrestling very well. Like you right. can find a lot of stuff like that too. I also Cole think- Cabana is a great person to show a young kid because it's very, very physically funny, even if they don't understand the subtext okay. of it. I also think depending on your, if you are more like, what do I show kid? in terms of, like, appropriateness of, like, storyline and sexuality versus, like, appropriateness of violence, I think most of Lucha Underground is fine. I would agree with that. There's a lot of female empowerment. There's a lot of uh, just, like, equality across the board. I think there are some matches to obviously skip over. Yeah. Mm. Like, you don't want to probably be showing your kid Vampiro versus Pentagon in Ultima Lucha 1. Nope. (laughs) Um, But even though, like, things like Sexy Star and Mariposa are pretty violent, like, that's pretty great. Yeah. Um, it just I think it I think storyline wise everything in Lucha Underground is pretty safe. You just have to gauge the violence. Right. And with Mariposa and Sexy Star, they also do say fuck you Mariposa, which is maybe a little yeah. much for kids. But that's also something too where like it totally depends on where you are and the conversations you're having with your kid. Like if you can sit down and talk to them and be like, This is a violent match, this is and also like it depends on where you are in the Santa is real, is not real phase of their wrestling too like if you versus non kayfabe right if you can like address that with them and and, like explain the context of something like that like then that opens up different avenues too and i think more of lucha would be would be accessible in that way too yeah so it it all just kind of depends on that but i think that there are lots of options just for kids safe wrestling too yeah i guess because i grew up where like when i watched stuff like violence was never the problem it was like just like inappropriate storylines yeah Mm mm-hmm so in my head, I'm like, violence is fine. It's just like, you know, panty matches or whatever. Yeah, none, none of that, please. None of those panty matches. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, if you guys, all, anybody else has any recommendation for good, like, kid kid starter stuff. It also seems, I don't watch it, but it also seems like a show like Superstars would be good because yeah. they, the matches don't seem to, like, kind of matter that much, but they seem like decent matches, and mm-hmm. there's never too much storyline in there but it's just like fun wrestling and it's only like an hour or two yeah I think something like main event and superstars usually would be pretty safe Mm -hmm. but if you're gonna go that route you might as well just watch NXT I think Shikara and NXT are really safe bets yeah I think that those are the way to go too um I think that this last episode two weeks ago of Ring of Honor the Women of Honor stuff we we're not gonna talk about it this week but we will I can't find it but we will we'll talk about it at some point but um I think something like the the Women of Honor show on Ring of Honor actually is something good too if you just want to see like women who are performing well. Or Shimmer, it's, like yeah. renting one of the Shimmer tapes. Yeah. I again, I don't know tons about it. I've seen it. I don't know how violent the stuff is, but if you are just looking for like awesome female wrestlers, I think something like Shimmer or Shine is probably okay. Yeah, I would again, agree with that. Again, not totally familiar with how violent the stuff is, but yeah, like what I've seen of it, I wouldn't say that it's particularly violent. If you're already watching wrestling and it's not right, like right, we're right. introducing you into this world of wrestling, but like, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think Shimmer and Shine are both good places to go for that. All right. Okay. Question done. Okay. If you want to send us more questions, you can do that at notyourdemo at gmail.com. We are now out of questions. So. We're out of questions. So someone send us some questions. <laughs> if you want to follow us on Tumblr at notyourdemographic.tumblr.com. Um, you can find us on iTunes. Please rate, review, subscribe. Um, you can also find us on Cage Side Seats. And then after that, you should stick around and read some other stuff because I got good stuff. That's and true. And our friend Lady J was on um, this week of Cage Side Live, so you should listen to that. Yes. And also listen to the Face Like Feministas, especially because Ultima Lucha. You know what I was thinking? Like, are they going to continue their podcast during the off-season of Ultima Lucha? They said that they're going to take a hiatus and continue to do, like, indie darling shows. Oh, okay. Which makes sense. Because so I will be miss like, listening to, mm-hmm. to them. I think uh, Lady Jane and I are going to talk about the first episode of the Cruiserweight Classic uh, sometime this weekend, too. So oh. look forward to that. Cute. Yeah. I was, she asked on Twitter, she was like, would any of my lady friends want to talk about this? I was like, uh, duh, yes, obviously. <laughs> Hello, this is right in my wheelhouse. So... That should be good. Oh, also, here, let's let's pimp another super funny podcast. The Heels and Heels have a fucking hilarious mini episode out. Really? It has nothing to do with wrestling. Oh my god, I cannot wait. It is twelve minutes long. They're so funny. They play 
Do you know what the Chubby Bunny Challenge is? Yes. They play, they call it the Fluffy Bunny Challenge, and they play that, and it, I laughed so hard. Like I fucking awesome. cried laughing at work today. It's funny because it I don't, up. I don't necessarily agree with their opinions on wrestling a lot, but they are so some stuff we do. Fucking funny. They're so funny. They're like, they're like a. If you want to listen to a podcast about wrestling, but that's like kind of not about wrestling, but you just, it's like a good mix, a mix of like comedy and wrestling. They're yeah. so fucking funny. I absolutely agree. They're, they're great. <laughs> and I, like they cover Total Divas too, which I really like too, because I don't really listen to any, anyone else who comprehensively covers Total Divas. Oh, I miss, I miss so much. I mean, it'll become a bad. I think this is a new review. I can't remember if I've read it before. But we're going to read it again. It says, The Best. It's by Michael Portis. Portius. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, not because that's your name, but sorry, because I don't know how to say it. Your name is fine. I'm a moron. <laughs> this show is one of the highlights of my week. Stella and Aaron offer a fresh and unique voice to the wrestling podcast and landscape. Finally, there is an alternative to listening to guys being sexist and fantasy booking. Keep up the great work. We uh, will. We will. Let it me... is new because it's from July 5th. Oh, okay, good. Thank uh, you, Michael. We, we will probably fantasy book still, but we don't really do that as much anymore. I think we more just like shoot ideas into the air. It's not like, yeah. this is how it should be, and maybe if they did this, they could do this. I think it's just us going, I think maybe this will happen. I don't know. We did. We were all about the brilliant and the beautiful. That's true. We did fantasy book the shit out of that. Although, once Sando got released, we got Frizango, so... Yeah, like, Frizango is a pretty good second. <sighs> yeah, that. mm-hmm, that's true. When it, I liked how uh, Fandango just, like, cleaned him off. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, spit water at him. He, they were like, oh, no, this is chinchilla fur. Yes. Also, if you don't watch um, Tyler Breeze's, like, YouTube channel, it's should. fucking insane. You really it's should. so weird and great. <laughs> so you should listen to that. Yeah. All right. All right. That's we'll it. see you later. Sorry I didn't put any wrestling music in this. I just like didn't feel like editing it. Yeah. I hope you understand. All right. Okay, Peace to you, Jabronis. F-A-B-U-L-O-U-S. Today. So- sorry. Meow. Get hooked on Tuesday at Bonefish Grill with our three course menu. Begin with a crisp salad, your choice of a savory entree like our Atlantic salmon and a decadent dessert for $14.9. Enjoy our three course hooked on Tuesday menu for only $14.9, available every Tuesday. And be sure to try our day boat scallops caught daily off the coast of New England and delivered fresh to Bonefish Grill. They're grilled to perfection and served over a bed of creamy risotto. So come into Bonefish Grill today before they're gone. Never stop streaming. Only T-Mobile lets your family stream music and video on the most popular services like YouTube and Pandora without using any of your LTE data. And right now, get your family three lines, each with six gigs of LTE data for just 40 bucks per line, and your fourth line is free. Hurry to T-Mobile or call 1-800-T-MOBILE now. Limited time offer subject to change. OAC plus taxes and fees. Detectable video ticket fixing music DVD quality. Third-party subscription charges may apply. Streaming on included services on qualifying plan on our network. See data management practices at T-Mobile.com.